In our previous videos, we've been using a 512 hertz tuning fork to demonstrate the importance of getting a correct sample rate and also the importance of having the correct analysis lines in your FFT. When we ran those tests, though the tuning fork says it's 512, the software has been saying that it's 513. And so what we'd like to do is demonstrate that the tuning fork is actually off by about a hertz from what it's labeled as. And we're going to do that by using a third party cell phone app, which is going to give us a pure 512 tone right now. And we'll run that next to the microphone and note that our software is picking up that 512 tone. You'll see in the uh, time domain a nice sine wave. We're po focusing mostly on the microphone, the blue line. And you'll notice that the FFT peak value there is 511.96. So 512 hertz. The cell phone is producing 512 hertz. And our software is picking up that 512 hertz and recording that as 511.96. So now what we will do is compare the cell phone 512 to the tuning fork again. And I'll hold it next to the microphone, but what helps is to amplify it by touching the tuning fork to the tabletop. And on the tabletop we have an accelerometer, which is the uh, second graph in each situation, the red line, purple line, and uh, you'll see um, a difference, a 512 from the cell phone and a 513 from the tuning fork. Tuning fork on the table, we'll see on the FFT below a 513.43 and the peak 511.96 for the phone. And if we zoom in, I'm going to try to hold the cell phone and the tuning fork near the microphone and we might be able to pick up a double peak and it might be at times where the tuning fork is dominant um, as it slowly dampens the cell phone will become dominant and we'll, peaks will j jump from 513 to 512. There you saw it. It was on the 513 and it jumped to the 512. Let's do that one more time here. There it is, 513 on the microphone. And as it's quieting down, it just jumps to the uh, cell phone 512. Now the final thing I want to emphasize is that the tuning fork and the cell phone, because they are not in sync, they're off by about a hertz. You should see a phase shift in the time domain. So we're going to hit them again. I'm going to put the um, tuning fork on the table and the cell phone is going to be by the microphone and you look at the time domain pictures in the top and we'll notice that they are going to be out of phase. Notice that they didn't always match up. And if we pause the recording, we might be able to compare those two. We'll just uh, jump around here a little bit, see if we can find an instance of that. Here's an example of where they're pretty close. Uh, peak to peak. And we've seen other instances where it was peak to trough. So um, the point is they are definitely out of phase at times, which is what you would expect when the two are off by a hertz. We're going to hit the tuning fork again and uh, we're going to run say a 5 Tuning fork is 513. We run a 507 or a 508. Okay, we'll go 508. And you'll hear a, what they call in, in music or band kind of a 
vibration sound. We'll see if the microphone can pick it up. Okay, to our ears that was pretty obvious. We'll see if the microphone picked that difference up. All right, the last thing we're going to do is take a look at the fact that my tuning fork is 51357. That's the um, best analysis our software has given for it. So we're going to run the um, cell phone at 51357 and we're going to compare them and look at their sine waves and their FFTs. And we have in both FFTs a 513.43 being recorded by our software. And looks to me like the waveforms are staying, I'm dying out of mine, but they were staying in sync. So um, overall, what we want to remind us of is that the tuning fork says 512 our software is picking up 513 and the software is accurate as we look at an independent tone from a cell phone which was also um, when it was 513 or 512 that was being picked up correctly by the software and it demonstrated when we compared it to this tuning fork that the tuning fork is off from its label by about a hertz